Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing Warzone 2.0 in its minimum and recommended system requirements provided by Blizzard or Activision or Infinity Ward. I don't know who makes the specifications, uh, but I know who tests them. It's me, Mario. No, it's not Mario, it's Chris. But let's go, <laughs> let's get into it, shall we? So on the minimum specifications, it asks for an i3-6100, i5-2500K or Ryzen 3 1200. And you know me, I go for the older and worst stuff, so I chose the Core i5 2500K from 2011 for this video, because, well, it's there, right? <laughs> On the memory side of things, it asks for 8 gigabytes, and we got it in dual channel, it's DDR3 1333 MHz, uh, 2x4, of course. And on the video card specification, it asks for an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960 or AMD Radeon RX 470. That's pretty weird, because the 470 is way faster than 960 and this game actually likes AMD GPUs more than Nvidia ones so quite a huge disparity there and of course I chose to go with the slower stuff GTX 960 2 gigabyte model as well because that's what they recommend uh, for the minimum specification well yes it's, it's recommend for the minimum so let's go for the recommended stuff now <laughs> and for the recommended requirements it asks for an i5 6600k a core i7 4770 and or an AMD Ryzen 5 1400. I chose the i7 because it's the older stuff. I have the i7 4770K here, but I didn't overclock it and it's only 100 megahertz faster than the 4770 stock. For the RAM, we got 12 gigabytes, an 8 gigabyte stick and a 4 gigabyte stick running at 1600 megahertz. And for the video card, it asks for an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 or an AMD Radeon RX 580. Again, the AMD stuff is actually better in this game, and I went with a GTX 1060. It asks for 4 gigabytes of video memory, so the 3 gigabyte wouldn't cut it, so we got this 6 gig model right here. We're here in the desktop with everything installed in the minimum requirements. It looks absolutely amazing, right? <laughs> It only took like about 20 minutes for it to install the shaders and optimize everything, you know. Um, now, let's go over the settings and we're playing at 720p. We're actually utilizing the default settings that the game set for us or recommended preset here. Uh, that means that NIS is set to native. Okay, so we're running at native 720p with a little bit of sharpening added to it and the low to medium settings. I would say that this is close to like the basic preset in this game. Oh motion blur let, let's just turn that off in <laughs> this as well okay yeah look at that even while dropping it's not dropping too much well we're, we're dropping but yeah you know what I mean the FPS are kind of stable ish <laughs> all right this is my usual benchmark run in this game starting in the middle of the map basically as you can see and it has a lot of water which is extremely intensive yep look at that oh it didn't drop from from 30 FPS okay that's not terrible, that makes me believe that like low settings will actually run pretty well. Although, we are with a CPU bottleneck here. You can see that CPU utilization is pretty high up there, um, and the GPU usage is not maxed out. So if you were to pair this CPU with the RX 470, you'd see even less CPU, uh, GPU utilization. But yeah, we're still on the basic settings after all. I I'm impressed. I am impressed. I thought it was going to be completely unplayable, especially because of the 8 gigabytes of RAM, but no, it's holding up reasonably well. I think if you lock the FPS to 30, it could be a smooth experience. Oh boy, I'm hearing somebody. Yep, there's a guy there. Oh god, okay. Not gonna kill anybody with 30 FPS, am I? <laughs> them bastards, hit them bastards, oh yes. <laughs> Let's go. What the hell is that one doing there? Oh, it's, that's just a bot, probably. Okay. Uh... Gulag time. Now the Gulag should be less CPU intensive, right? Because it's not rendering in all of the players. And yes, we are getting a little bit higher FPS here. Not a problem. That could also be because there's no water in the screen right now. Come on, come on. Almost, almost got him. Come on. Nice, got one. There's another one right here. Come on, where is he? Where is he? Oh my gosh. So if you... My boy didn't do anything! Anyways, that CPU is definitely what's being taxed the most here, but it is able to provide those 30 plus FPS 
all of the time, which is very interesting. I didn't think that was gonna happen. Man, the 2500K just doesn't die. I mean, you could say that it's dead because the, the experience is quite stuttery, but it's 30 plus still. <laughs> very impressive stuff. Now let's go ahead and set it to the minimum settings with 100% resolution scale, no upscaling at the moment. So native 720p, no sharpening either. And this is it. Oh, let's disable this. Oh, I remember this was actually causing a lot of stuttering in my main system. So maybe disabling it will actually make it playable. Huh. Can we get a smooth experience? FPS on the minimum settings seem to be around the same, right? 30s and 40s. Yeah, it doesn't really change much, guys, unfortunately. In the water, it drops just slightly. Eh, actually, no, it's the same. Oh, GPU usage goes up to 100% near the water, though, so that's interesting. Um, and we're seeing, yeah, major CPU bottleneck. The 960 itself, guys, as I showed in my 22 GPU benchmark, it can deliver around 60 to 70 FPS on average in this game, in this section right here that I'm testing it in. Um, so yeah, it's it's, it's it's basically it's basically a major CPU bottleneck that we're seeing right here. 2500K, well, it just can't really handle more than 40-ish FPS maximum, apparently, at least in this area. In the Gulag, it was a little bit smoother, that's for sure. Let's see if anybody dropped around here. I don't think so. I just want to get to that uh, foresty area right there. It usually takes me a couple of tries here. <laughs> uh, oh, somebody dropped here. Okay, maybe we're gonna die, guys, and <laughs> I'll need to record this again. Now, here we are, guys. We, we actually made it 100% CPU usage. You know what? Overclocking this CPU would actually net you a little bit more FPS, that's for sure. So if you have a Z-series board that you can overclock this with, definitely do that. And it might deliver a few more FPS, but it won't really get rid of stuttering because the CPU usage will still be at 100%. Now the good thing is, whereas if you were GPU bound, this area right here and the water area would... Why am I being tracked? Why me? <laughs> it's 122 people in the map. But yeah, those areas were more GPU bound, so you would drop more FPS there, uh, but not in a CPU bound scenario. In the CPU bound scenario, well, it's basically the same or similar at least in most areas. So it, there's no major fluctuation in frames there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock the FPS to 30, which is actually the minimum in the game. <laughs> uh, and this will ease out the CPU usage by a little bit and possibly it's going to make it a little bit smoother-ish. Yeah, no, it's still stuttering a lot, guys. So, unlocked FPS are actually the way to go in this one, because if you lock them, it's still gonna suck a bit. <laughs> uh, who is shooting at me? Sniper guy? Oh, there he is. It's terrible. So that's been it for minimum requirements, guys. And I gotta say, it wasn't really that enjoyable, honestly. Even though we were above 30 FPS, and if that's what they went for, for the minimum uh, system requirements in this game, this is pretty accurate. You know, if you dropped the GPU requirement to, say, like a 950, it would actually drop from 30 in the water scenarios. So the 960 is pretty accurate for minimum requirements GPU. But that CPU, well, it's, it could get 30 plus, but it was really stuttery, guys. So I couldn't really enjoy this too much, but you can get used to the stuttering and I guess you could actually play the game like this if you really, really wanted to. But if you're running an 11 year old system, you should definitely upgrade. <laughs> it's time, okay? Let's move on to the recommended stuff. By the way, this is what the recommended system requirements look like. Not bad, right? <laughs> Compared to the previous one. This was a little bit faster installing the shaders, but it still took about three minutes. <laughs> uh, this is all installed in an SSD, by the way. It's Windows installation as well as the game installation. Same for the minimum settings. We got 1066 gig right here. We're playing at 1080p resolution and using the recommended settings first. Interestingly, it sets NIS to ultra quality, not native in this one, uh, but maybe it's because because we are running a higher resolution after all. And these are the settings, these are more like balanced settings, I would say. I'm just gonna disable the motion blurs and film grains. Okay, oh, this is not enough to get 60 FPS and we're still heavily CPU bottleneck. No, come on, are you serious? <laughs> Why every time, dude? <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Okay, anyways, near the water it gets full GPU utilization once again because it's way more GPU intensive. So the 1060 itself, it would drop into the 50s and 40s anyways, even with a faster CPU. But most of the time it would be able to get 60 plus FPS, but it isn't because of a CPU bottleneck. And the interesting thing is, most of the settings are set to like low and normal. And they say in the recommended requirements page that these specs are enough to get around 60 FPS or more than 60 FPS. I don't remember, I'll put it in the screen. Most of the time, but they aren't. I haven't really seen 60 yet, have I? <laughs> I wasn't really looking at the, the, the FPS the entire time, but uh, yeah, well, even here, which is supposedly my least intensive part of the benchmark run, it's not... Uh, getting 60 fps so that's that's a very big shame where the heck is that guy oh this is a dmr i'm screwed guys oh my gosh where is he where is he i don't know i'm just gonna run away run away no 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 oh he's coming he's stop it stop doing that i also suck at this game by the way if you haven't noticed <laughs> Uh, especially with less than 60 frames. Hopefully in the Gulag it's gonna be different now. Let's see. Look at that, in the Gulag we get 60 plus. That's awesome. Let's get these bastards, shall we? Where are they? Oh boy. Come on. Where? Where? Oh, there one. Okay. All right, there's another one right there. Hopefully we can get both of them down. Oh boy, no, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, nice, one, one down. Where's the other? There he is. Come on, can I throw some grenades and stuff? Probably not. Where, where that? Oh my gosh, I, I wrecked it. I'm wrecking everything. This is interesting though, because <laughs> at least we see worst case scenario inside of smokes and stuff. Uh, there, oh, that's not a guy. Oh, oh, that is a guy, I think. Come on, there we go, we did it guys. 60 FPS in the Gulag is possible. So maybe they they kind of went into the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer and saw like 60-ish FPS. That's way less intensive, especially CPU intensive um, than this. And they just went with those requirements. It's kind of weird though, because the actual requirements for Modern Warfare 2 are different from these. But anyways, let's uh, continue here. Yeah, back to 50s. Yeah, 60 around here, not too bad with all of this vegetation. But I was expecting a little bit better though. <laughs> Especially given that they said that high settings would get 60 FPS or around that and we're not even on high settings, right? All right, guys, we're back here at 1080p resolution using the minimum settings now. Sorry about the transition here. Uh, Digimon just called me. It was important. Anyways, let's start uh, counting our FPS here and uh, put our mind into the game now. So we're getting around the same FPS, even on medium minimum settings, right? Like... It's terrible. <laughs> the optimization is terrible. I wouldn't say that the recommended requirements are accurate in this one, because in recommended requirements, you either want like high settings with 30 plus FPS on high, but in a game like Warzone, first person shooter, you probably would be looking at 60 FPS in the recommended requirements, right? And we're not even getting that on low. Of course, we are CPU bound once again, GPU usage is kind of low there. So the 1060 would be able to get 60 plus, at least on average, as I showed you in my full 22 GPU benchmark, but paired with the i7 4770K, well, it is a bottleneck and around the middle of the map, at least you get pretty low FPS. It's, it's not enough to achieve 60, and this is the K version, it's 100 megahertz higher than the non-K version, which is what they recommend. Wait, what? There's a guy right there. What the hell? He didn't see me? Okay, we're screwed now, probably. Where, where are you? God damn it! Come on! There we go! <laughs> now this is playable, as you can see. I am able to get some kills now, finally. <laughs> uh, you saw that I also got a kill with the pistol previously. So that was great. But it just doesn't matter if you play on minimum or balanced settings, if you have a CPU bottleneck in this game. It's gonna run exactly the same. It's just that your GPU is not gonna be fully utilized. I want to check it out, yeah, in this big city, because this is supposedly a little bit more CPU intensive right because it's so big um but it's getting around the same fps as we've seen previously we got no water near us right now well 
we we do <laughs> but we're not taking a look at it so it's not dropping our fps oh look at that oh no yeah oh no indeed this is definitely very poor performance for the recommended requirements in the game in my opinion playing it at lowest settings possible 1080p res and getting really low fps is just it's not recommended requirements worthy you know in the first person shooter and getting uh, uh, less than 60 frames that is where did the guy go? Well, for more accurate uh, recommended requirements, I would say that uh, like an i7-7700 instead of the 4770 would probably be capable of getting 60 plus most of the time, like 10 to 20 more FPS than what we're seeing right here. So it would be a more comfortable experience for sure. Uh, 12 gigs, it's enough. The RAM is at 9 gigabytes, so no problems there. It's actually pretty accurate, in my opinion. And finally, the 1060 is a little bit too bad at balanced settings, actually. So I'd bump it that up to like a 1660 at least. So yeah, minimum requirements, I will leave them the same. GTX 962 gig, i5 2500K, although it's really stuttery, it could get 30 FPS on minimum settings possible, and 8 gigabytes of RAM. And again, for recommended requirements, I would go for a 7th gen i7, 12 gigs of RAM, DDR4 in that case, and uh, a GTX 1660, I think it would be more accurate. But anyways, that's been it for this one, my friends. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye-bye.